Next is probably the story of how fate entered my life. Um, I started gymnastics when I was six years old at a little gym called Jim and I in Houston, Texas. And shortly after I started gymnastics, these two that everyone knows, Marta and Bella Crowley, decided to buy the gym that I was happened to be at. I didn't know who they were. I couldn't understand their English. I remember having an exhibition and sitting on the floor with my friends and like little snotty kids going, what are we doing here? I don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> but obviously fate had something to do with that and I'm so thankful that that happened to be the story. Over the years, I have learned more than I can possibly explain. You all know who these two people are from what the media is and what they, what they say of them, but I will tell you that there are no two people that have a greater passion, have a greater leadership ability, and absolute intuition to, I feel like, help athletes to, to become their best and to know what is the right move. I'm so thankful for that, absolutely. Two weeks ago, I was um, with my husband, Chris, down at um, the Crowley's Ranch, and my husband and I heard a gunshot go off, and so we got in the car quickly and drove down to the lake and uh, found Bella out there by himself, and he quickly suited me up with a gun. I had never held one before in my life, and um, started trap shooting for the first time in my life, and I just went to the craziest place, um, and again, just being so thankful. He immediately got into it, put your elbow here, slide it out and pull up, put your chin down, and I was in heaven. I was like being coached again by Bella. <laughs> but it doesn't go away. I was nicknamed the president of the Pumpkin Federation growing up. That was my first leadership role, and I thank them for giving me that task. <laughs> I remember um, in times that I would have struggles in the gym and um, I was not a hard-headed teenager, I'm sure that my memory of that is wrong, but on times when I was not doing, doing everything that was going towards my goals, I know Bella would sit me down and he would say, and I feel like with honesty, I would stand on my head for you until the Olympics are over if I could help you to see what opportunities you have in front of you. I'm so thankful that you kept showing me the light every day through the ups and through the downs that your attendance here means more than you, sh you will ever know. Sincerely, I thank you. <laughs> Other people that were involved in my success that um, I absolutely would not have been able to get where I am are my teammates. Um, I was very fortunate to be in a program that um, was an elite training program that had multiple athletes in there at one time all trying to be and become our very best and to represent the United States and I honestly feel like on a day-to-day -day basis that any of us could have been the one standing atop the podium and I'm very grateful for them our memories most of the memories that I have of my gymnastics are with my with my teammates I actually use the time right now as I get to drive back and forth and still going out to um, the training center to pick up the phone and, and touch base with teammates like Amy Shear, who was in the pictures, um, Kelly Pitson, Betty Okino, and Erica Stokes, all who I feel like played such a pivotal role in helping me to be, become champion. Now these people I feel like were the characters of one chapter of my gymnastics and it's really the one that I feel like is celebrated the most by medals and, and those type of accomplishments that are written down on paper. And for the most part, when I think back of most of those years, again, kind of the years leading all the way up um, through 1992, it feels like it was storybook. And it feels like it was fairy tale almost. Not that there weren't struggles day to day, but so many things just went right. Um, I was able to hit at the right moments. I was able to take advantage of, of this going this way and this going that. And like uh, Bart mentioned on the video, the Olympics for me didn't turn out to be what I imagined in my head. 
as this ultimate dream of, I remember always thinking there's going to be, I'm standing under these big lights and I'm going to go out there and do the routines of my life. And I did, just maybe not on the days that the individual medals were shown. Um, I'm so thankful to have been a part of a team that were truly teammates and friends for life. Um, but I will say that I did struggle afterwards um, with trying to figure out what it, all mean, what it all meant. I think it's very interesting to hear many people who've been on top of the podium to, to try to see it. And I wonder if it's like that across the board. Anybody who tries to shoot very high, there's always one more thing that you probably wanted, one more thing that you thought you could get. But that's the only way that you can get there, is to shoot for that. And I think it took many years, um, as well as time that I spent after the Olympics, whether that was touring and doing gymnastics more on a fun basis um, like that without the pressure, or more so now, the time that I have with my my current leading man, my husband, my best friend, my um, coaching partner, Chris. I, I feel like the thing that he has helped me to learn the most um, is to truly own the whole journey and to be proud of the whole package and who you are um, and that I've learned that my biggest, my biggest accomplishment was not necessarily the medals, was that I got to play my game. Um, I played my game, I played my hand, or to put it into card game, Nasta maybe. Some, a lot of the times I got to take the package, and that felt really nice. <laughs> um, but I had my share of times where I gave the package too. And at the end of the day, you still walk out going, I got to play the game, and it was a lot of fun. I feel like my journey right now has led me into a role that I probably wouldn't have gone down um, had I had a different Olympic outcome. It has led me to become friends and to um, get to have relationships with people like that are in the table in the back that made this journey up here to be with me today. I'm very thankful for that. More than that even, I feel like it led me to a, what I feel like is the best career. Um, I was very happy to talk with Bella, and he probably doesn't even remember these conversations <laughs> with me, but um, a few months ago he said he was reminiscing about his life and he was with his friends and looking back and um, how thankful he is that this was his career path. But this is what he gets to call his job and his work. Um, I always get confused when my, my I have a, a kindergartner and first grader and they ask, where am I going? And I get confused, like, am I supposed to say I'm going to work? Like, I guess that's what grown-ups say, right? I'm going to work, where I feel like I'm going to the gym. Like, I get to wake up and go to the gym. I get to guide other people who are trying to find what their journey is. I get to guide people, like the young lady in back, uh, Tiffany Tolme, who was um, our first optional gymnast, to take somebody from, I don't know if I still want to do this, to get in there, love gymnastics, go on, win three J.O. national titles in a row, four NCAA titles in a row. I feel so proud to be a part of those journeys and to try to help everybody see, play your hand, play your game. Because that's really, at the end of the day, that's what I feel like I got from gymnastics. This is such a tremendous honor. I almost don't want to sit down because then it means it's over for today. <laughs> it's over and this is my one time, I, like I said, I'm, I'm beyond thrilled to be a part of this amazing group. I'm so thankful for all of you to be here to share this with me. Congratulations, Kim. You know, it's interesting that we come here initially to acknowledge their medals, but uh, how powerful uh, that what we're really celebrating is what remarkable people they are. So thank you for reminding us. We have one goal at the Gymnastics Hall of Fame, the International Gymnastics Hall of Fame, regardless of nation, politics, race, 
gender, religion. We aim to honor the undeniable excellence of the athletes and contributors whose lasting impact on the sport of gymnastics will be appreciated for ages. On one commercial note, we are a 501c3. <laughs> on your table are donation cards. We'd be grateful if you feel compelled to uh, make a donation and help us keep the mission alive to make the induction into the International Gymnastics Hall of Fame one of the highest honors that a gymnast or contributor can achieve in our sport. We've been grateful for many of you in the past who have donated and we'd be delighted if you all would consider filling this out and handing it to one of us or sending it to us sometime in the future. We look forward to seeing you all back for the 17th annual ceremony next year back here at the Petroleum Club.